Chapter 5 Eli Conti was behind us. His two goons were at either corner of the room, looking out the windows, hands in their pockets. It is you. You were at the bank when it got robbed. I jolted to my feet, almost by instinct, and put Mandy behind me. I don't know why. She was the one with the guns. Maybe subconsciously, that was why. I knew that if I let her loose, she would kill every person in there. Looking back, maybe I wasn't trying to protect her as much as I was protecting them. But that wasn't what was on my mind. I need to keep her safe, was my thought, if I'm being honest. But what Eli Conti said shocked me. We saw you on the camera. You're even wearing the same clothes. Mint shirt. Blue tie. You took an AK. His eyes were on me. Who's that behind you? Your girlfriend? Huh? Sorry, sweetie. Your boyfriend here is in a lot of trouble. He threw a punch into my face. It reopened the cut on my head. Bang! Eli Conti's legs buckled beneath him, and he fell to the floor. He grasped at his pelvis as his tan pants quickly soaked red. Bang! Bang! One of the goons fell. I dropped to the floor and pulled my tie and shirt off. I had to use something to stop Eli Conti's bleeding. Mandy was rampaging, firing off what seemed like dozens of bullets, running around the aisles of the laundromat. Then I heard a poof, and she started coughing and rubbing her eyes. Whack! Whack! I looked up and saw the one living goon wailing on her. She was covered in powdered soap, wiping it from her eyes. She latched onto one of the metal laundry bins and flung it into the goon, threw a soccer kick right between his legs, then put him in a headlock. He was much stronger than her, though, and effortlessly carried her around. She took both of her legs and kicked off one of the dryers, sending the man head first into the hard washer door. She was out of breath, huffing and puffing. She walked over to the goon she had shot and knelt down. When she stood, she pointed his gun at the living goon. I screamed, Mandy, no! Bang! Why? Why? I murmured to myself as my attempts to stop Eli Conti's bleeding failed. No matter how hard I tried, blood still flowed out onto the floor. Then I realized. There were two holes. The bullet passed right through his pelvis. I would have to plug the holes on both sides. But I was out of time. Eli Conti was unresponsive. Mandy hobbled over to me. I hate being a woman. And I hate you. She was in rough shape. Both of her eyes were black and her nose was bleeding. A lot of the powdered soap had been knocked off of her, but much of what remained soaked up the blood. Sit down, sit down, I told her. Pinch your nose- I know how to stop a bloody nose, moron, she snapped. Why do you hate me? I asked. Because you're a man and you're useless. If I had your bone structure, I would have won that fight easy. I only weigh like 120 pounds. I punched that guy in the face five times and he didn't even flinch. That guy punched you and you tanked it. That guy was a monster. Massive. You took a bomb to the face and we're still standing. I'm sorry, I said. I didn't really know what else to say. Are you okay? She gave me a big frown as tears formed in the corners of her eyes. Do you want... I hesitated to finish my question. I thought it would be the last thing someone would want. Want a hug? She let herself fall face first into my chest, and she sobbed, letting tears and blood and mucus flow down onto my stomach. I didn't have the courage to wrap my arms around her, so I put my hands on her shoulders. Would you please stop killing people today? I asked. No, she said. That guy was going to kill you. I couldn't let that happen. Yeah, he said something about seeing me. I think I would have noticed him at the bank, I said. He said he saw you on camera, she said, as she slid her hands around my waist. That gave me the courage to grab her a little more. I wrapped one arm all the way around her torso and held her head with the other. 
It would be great if we could ask him what he meant. God, he bled out fast. I didn't even know bullets could go straight through people like that. That's horrible. Ten millimeter. Best millimeter. I'm always loaded with extreme penetrators. Blazing hot stuff. A nine won't fly through bone like that. Damn. It actually made it through his pelvis? That was pretty impressive, honestly. How do you know how to fight like that? She explained how she knew how to shoot, but she beat a guy that was nearly twice her size. She pulled away from me. Why do you think I know how to fight? Look at me. I got my ass beat. Then she started whimpering. Uh, uh, my hands hurt so bad. Can you hold my nose for me? Sure, I said as I guided her to the bench. I tried to ignore the three dead people on the floor. What's going on with your hands? Hands, wrists, forearms. Ten millimeter hurts to shoot. I love it, though. I got carried away. I was blowing all of my shots like an idiot. She fell over and put her head on my shoulder. I just shot $50 worth of ammo. $50. Well, I'm a licensed massage therapist, if you'd like me to massage your hands, I blurted out. I thought you were a paramedic, she said. I am, and I'm also a massage therapist. Fine, she said. There's ten minutes left on the dryer. I ditched the SUV somewhere just outside the city after I dropped Mandy off at her place. I couldn't just be driving the thing around forever. I hope nobody took notice of how much I shook my head as I walked back to my apartment. The walk was long and anxious. I didn't know if I would be spotted again. I was wearing Lily's merch jacket that Mandy had worn. She took it off as soon as her hoodies were dry and gave it to me since my shirt was soaked in blood. It was covered in the powdered soap, but it fit surprisingly well. Lily liked the way the jacket looked on me, and she gave me a matching hat to go with it, so the likelihood of me being recognized was low, but still. I was suspicious of every corner, of every car that hit its brakes, of anyone that looked at me through the corner of their eye. I hadn't eaten anything and I was exhausted, and I don't know what I would have done if I had been spotted. But I made it back to my apartment without incident. I threw a cup of ramen in the microwave and hopped right into the shower. I was still covered in blood. My own, and Mandy's, and Eli Conti's. Watching it all spiral down the drain was both mesmerizing and chilling. I thought I should be horrified and scarred by it all, but I wasn't. I had moral objections to nearly everything that had happened that day, but I wasn't as disturbed by it all as I thought I should be. I had been hit in the face, been present in a bank robbery, stole a car, and witnessed nine murders. It seemed to me that one should be mentally crippled by such a set of events. I was certainly feeling anxious and skittish, but not disturbed. I stood in the shower baffled by it all. I didn't have much of an appetite when I got out, but I choked my ramen down anyway. After a little thought, I knew my appetite had been ruined by the sickening churn of guilt. I knew in my gut that there was no way my life could be normal after that day. I knew that I was in trouble. Perhaps with the law. Definitely with the mob. I had work that night, so I needed to get a little sleep. One might think that I would be tormented by the images of all the blood and carnage I had witnessed all day, but instead, it was Mandy's smile when I asked her what her favorite color was, the gaze she gave me when she was eating her cereal, her eyes welling with tears as she fell onto me. My heart raced at the thought of her scent. Logically, I should have been terrified, but I was smitten. My dreams rewrote my entire day without violence. Instead of assaulting the barista, she and I spent our morning at a cute coffee shop, eating pastries and drinking designer drinks in tall size. We left the bank without shooting anybody. I went back to her place and we talked and laughed as she ate her cereal. We spent our time at the laundromat goofing off, and we didn't fight any mafiosos. 
Waking from that sleep was rough for more than one reason. It only lasted about three and a half hours, and I had to keep reminding myself that the Mandy from my dreams was not the one I had spent the entire day with. Work wasn't the best. It was just more of the same, except now there were overdoses and stabbings in addition to shootings and car crashes. One man had been shot in his car at a stoplight. He had been shot nine times. He was dead before we got there. Another had been stabbed 14 times. We lost him on the way to the hospital. One man had been shot five times in the stomach. He was alive and alert, but moaning and crying all the way to the hospital. Perhaps I wasn't cut out for that job. Gosh, I said as I hopped into the ambulance. Why is anyone allowed to have a gun? Why do they let anybody have these things? My coworker Bob probably didn't hear me, or he just ignored me. It seemed that these guns only caused mayhem and death. What other purpose is there for them, other than killing? It was what they were designed to do. I got home at around 10 in the morning. I threw my uniform off and flopped on my bed. The dreams I had now were much worse. I was being chased by the bank robbers, and they gunned down civilians as they pursued me. Everywhere I went, carnage and death followed. Somehow, the impact of the bullets in my dreams were even more horrific than they were in real life. A bullet hit my leg, and I flinched. I flinched so violently that I woke myself up. I was shivering, and I was sweating. Something was upsetting my stomach. I didn't know why, I hadn't eaten anything since the ramen nearly 14 or so hours prior. I got up and went to my toilet. I hovered over the porcelain for a few minutes. Strangely, the cold white bowl was calming somehow. After a while, I stood, thinking I was ready to go back to sleep. But my stomach had other plans. I gagged and heaved as I rushed back to the toilet. Nothing but yellow bile came up. I felt better afterwards, at least. I slept for another hour, when my phone began to vibrate. I grabbed it, and it said, Mandy. So I answered. Hello? Jace? She was huffing. It sounded like she was crying. I need your help. Can you come over?